Hi, I'm Drew. Welcome to my modest mansion. All right, guys, so this is my new to me Craftsman LT2000 lawn tractor. Huh, maybe that's what LT stands for. No, definitely limited trim. We bought the new house, much bigger yard. I was gonna do it with my little, my John Deere walk behind 36 inch. We were lucky enough that my in-laws were also moving. They actually closed like the same week as us and they were getting a house with a smaller yard and this would have been overkill for them. So they were kind enough to offer it up to us. It made mowing the lawn much easier. And I've put this thing through some work so far because that yard had not been touched all season. Actually, the neighbor said that they haven't touched the yard here in like three years. So the first time I took this mower out to use it, I realized it had a little smoking problem. It was more like a big smoking problem. My eyes burned. It actually cleared up, which I thought was weird. Maybe it was just running out of oil. But basically, anytime I take this out, I got to put in like half a quart of oil. And uh, that's just not fun. So we're going to get to fixing this. This has the Craftsman 18 horsepower Intec engine, which are... Very prone to blow the head gasket. So here's the replacement head gasket. So as you can see, there's a big gap right here where there's no bolts. So typically they end up blowing out right in between here and it ends up blowing cylinder pressure, combustion gases into your crankcase. Cause that's where your push rods are. Cause it also looks like the valve cover gasket itself is leaking. You can see it's been dripping onto the muffler, which was also a source of uh, smoke and stuff. I might want to let it cool off a little bit. I was hot riding it just now. Ghost riding the whip. All right, so we went ahead and flipped it around because the lighting was much better this way. Um, also took, cleaned off some of the goop. The more goop you can get off of it now, the less chances of it getting inside your engine. So the first things we're gonna do here, we're gonna pull a spark plug wire, the spark plug wire. Uh, we're gonna pull this cover off, we're gonna pull the valve cover off, intake, exhaust, and uh, then we'll be able to pull the head bolts and get the head off of it. Take a look, see what's going on in there. So just as I suspected, you can see right there, the gasket's all it's missing material right there. So that gasket was definitely blown between the uh, cylinder and the crankcase. And it's definitely been burning oil for a couple minutes. I mean, look at that. You see how shiny the metal is right there? It was just burned right through that gasket. You can see right there. So this should fix our issues with uh, smoking. The good news is when your engine burns that much oil, it really helps out with upper cylinder lubrication. Cylinder walls look great. 
All right, so I took some time and scraped off all the extra gasket material that was stuck on the cylinder head. I just used a razor blade. You want to be real careful you don't nick into the cylinder head itself. I like to leave it flat and just kind of use it as a scraper, not like a, you know. Also went ahead and got the piston cleaned off a little bit. There was actually so much carbon on it, I just kind of used a flathead screwdriver and just kind of scraped at it really, really lightly. I was able to chip most of it off, hit it with some uh, penetrating oil, and that kind of helped break it down a little more. Pulled the dowel pins too, just to make things easier to clean up. And I'm just going to be using my quarter inch angle grinder with one of these 3M Rolock bristly discs. Uh, you don't want to get too aggressive here. You're basically just trying to clean off this old gasket material. It's a good idea to put your piston all the way at the top dead center. That way you don't accidentally damage your cylinder wall. So those bristle discs, they are a little bit aggressive. I mean, at least you can see where I hit but you can't feel those marks, so they're not like real aggressive. They, it's actually kind of interesting, the machining across here, I can still feel the ridges from the mill as they, as they uh, decked this. So it's interesting, it's not, a real, it's not a flat surface or smooth, it's, it's actually somewhat rough. So I have a little straight edge here, and I was just taking it and uh, using the edge of it there, put it up against the block, basically just running it across this section here that the head gasket was blown in, Making sure you don't see light through this middle section because that would indicate that you have a problem. So just checking it in a few areas. It actually looks pretty decent. So and it's starting to rain out. That's new. Wasn't doing that five minutes ago. Yeah, that's nice and clean now. We're gonna do the same thing now to the uh, underside of the head, get that ready, and then we'll uh, bolt it up. We got it as clean as we could anyways. And we also checked this with the uh, straight edge. Looks like it might have a little bit of warp in it, but gas could leak that right up. I wouldn't worry. So I honestly don't even know why I checked that. But we're ready to start putting this deck together. So we got a new gasket here. Got the dowels back in. And we're just going to slam her home. Lock her in and let her eat. You don't want to tighten any of these yet. Just get them all in there. Snug them down by hand. And then we're going to go through and torque them to spec. Torque spec for these head bolts here. What I could find is 18 foot pounds or 220 inch pounds. When you're torquing these down, it's probably not too critical because of how small this head is, but a lot of engines have a torque sequence, which usually kind of starts in the middle. I don't remember seeing a sequence, but I'm just going to start with these middle two and work my way out. And I'm not going full torque the first time. I'm probably being way more careful than I need to be with a lawnmower engine. Most people probably just give them a couple of duggas, you know. And then once you get them all torqued down, I like to just double check them all, make sure you didn't miss one. Like that one. So now we'll get the exhaust and the uh, carburetor bolted back up. Valve train in. Love it when a plan comes together. Take has this rubber square cut rubber gasket and uh, I did not order a new one but it looks like it's been RTV'd in there previously so we're just gonna go that route. So I'm gonna get all the old RTV picked off this gasket and off the uh, carburetor and uh, we'll get this put in there. two push rods are actually different. The intake one appears to be made of aluminum and the exhaust appears to be made out of steel. There's a shiny spot on both of them. That's where they run through this plastic uh, holder. So as it runs, that'll polish itself on there, I guess. So stick it in there until it finds the hole. And there's this little piece that goes on the end of your valve. I took them off just so I didn't lose them. You gotta make sure that's in there. You don't have to take the rocker arms off to do this job. I just did, just to give them a nice Wipe down, inspect them, make sure there's nothing crazy going on. They look good, so. so the 
before I put the head on, I set the engine to top dead center because it's way easier when you can touch the piston and feel it rather than sticking something down the spark plug hole. You have to just look up specs because there's a ton of these engines. I, I'm going to do six thousandths on the intake and ten on the exhaust because it sounds like good numbers, I guess. But there's, a, you know, like Briggs and Stratton makes like a billion different engines. You know, there's 17, 18 horsepowers. Almost like a three-handed job, you know, kind of sucks, but... So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench to hold your adjuster nut. They have like a tiny little bit of drag. And then it's a T20 Torx on this engine. Let's crank those down. Oh, that's just perfect. Just gotta put the valve cover back on. Keep in mind when you're putting your valve cover back on, put it back on in the right orientation because you can flip it over. It'll still bolt right up, but then all of your engine information will be on the bottom side. And then you'll be out here with your cell phone trying to see what it says. You don't want to crank on these too tight because there's like a lip, like a bead that runs all the way around this valve cover. And that's where the sealing gets done. And if you crank this too tight, it'll go right through that gasket. I'll give it the old pinky torque. All right. Just going to put a spark plug in it. The old one was, I don't know how it was running on that spark plug. So luckily I got some spare parts with it and it came with a new spark plug. Let's see if she'll start. See if she smokes. engine's a little happier. We'll put it back together. Maybe we'll hit some of these grease zerks. I think this will be good to go. Right, guys so we've mowed the lawn now one and a half times with the mower since we put the head gasket in it and to check the oil the other day and it hasn't dropped much if at all so i think we got our issues sorted with the oil consumption you can't smell it anymore i did pick up a blower for it the other day on marketplace and all the bracketry and mounts to put it on the tractor it says it's going to fit and we got a booklet with it so we're going to be putting that on here in the near future um, because this driveway is like 300 feet long and I just I didn't see myself shoveling it So uh, this tractor was a huge answer to prayer I guess you'd say because it was kind of one of those things that in the back of my head Like I'm gonna have to get something because I ain't shoveling this driveway I'm not looking forward to you know walking, you know mowing the lawn So huge shout out to my in-laws for gifting us this tractor It has really helped us out Plus not to mention Daisy loves going for tractor rides, right? Yeah Woo -woo. <laughs> Mommy likes going for tractor rides too. Emerson likes the tractor also. So all right, that's it for the old Craftsman LT 2000 lawn tractor. It is hot to trot. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Keep doing what you're doing, be awesome.